What is up, Evangel students? I'm Pastor Robbie. Thank you so much for joining us tonight for Youth Online. If you're watching this live, it is so good to be with you. If you're watching this the day after or a hundred weeks after on YouTube or IGTV, welcome as well. What is up, Nevea? I see you there. Pastor Brandon has joined Claire in the house. Glad to see you, Savannah. It is so great to see you. Haven't seen you since literally like earlier today at church, and it was Liddy Fresh. Pastor Kevin just joined. Guys, Pastor Kevin's in the house. Let's give him a hand. He is just the man, the myth, and the legend. And tonight we have an incredible night for you. I'm really excited about it. If you were not at one night this last uh, this last week, you missed out. On an amazing time, Friendsgiving was... I can't, I can't take myself seriously with that. Okay. Friendsgiving was absolutely incredible. If you were not here last Wednesday for one night Friendsgiving, you missed Pastor Brandon Lloyd bringing down the house. Great message. It was a lot of fun. Before we get started tonight, I want to say this, and I know most of you watching live right now are used to to being a part of Evangel Students, but if not, if somebody's watching this and this is the first time you have ever been a part of Evangel Students, I want you to text the word NEW EC, that stands for New Evangel Church, NEW EC, one word, to the number 97,000. NEW EC to 97,000, that will tell us to reach out to you. One of our youth pastors on staff will reach out to you and welcome you to the Evangel Students community. And as always, our online service, Youth Online, we want to give you an opportunity to be faithful with what God has given you and to invest in Speed the Light. And if you have any Speed the Light offerings, we want to give you the chance to go online, evangel.church slash give, or by texting any amount to 84321 and make sure that's designated to STL, Speed the Light. We have an amazing night for you. Pastor Brandon is going to join us in just a second and give us a quick recap of his incredible message that he brought on Wednesday. But before we do, Pastor Kevin will be joining me live and we're going to play a little gizame and it's going to be a litty fresh fam jam. Let me see if I can find Pastor Kevin out of the live right now. That's awesome. And it's going to be incredible because we have literally 5,000 people go back and watch this after it's been live. So I'm excited about it. Pastor Kevin, let's do this real quick. Let's not take a whole lot of time. I don't know. I don't think okay. anybody's live. So let's see. I mean, we got a couple. If you are live you with us right now, I need you to drop something in the comments that you want Pastor Kevin to draw. I'm not going to look. I'm going to cl- cover the comments. Don't look, Robbie. I'm not going to look. And I'm going to guess purely based on what Pastor Kevin is drawing. So go ahead, drop something in the comments. I don't know, Kevin, can you see the comments? I can see a comment. I see mine. That's a we'll see. Point. We'll see. Drop things in there. Robbie's not going to look. You say it. I'm going to draw it on this paper. Robbie's going to guess what it is. This is the most revolutionary. Okay, we got something. Most I don't know if I can draw that. The most revolutionary game ever. So I'm going to try to draw like this so you can just see it. Draw it up but, higher. Uh, higher. I'm, I'm covering comments, like higher on the screen. There we go. Okay, go. Oh, yeah. There we go. Okay, uh, I'm going to try the first one. So, uh, circle. Um, cookie. Chocolate chip cookie. Uh, is that? <laughs> this is terrible. That's a uh, gingerbread man. That's, uh, is that is that yeah. Kevin? We're gonna go to the next suggestion. Okay, that's a good idea. That was that was uncomfortable. Square box, rectangle box, school bus, school bus. I'm right. It's a school bus. Semi truck. False. Mm. I'm not very good at this. No, you're really bad. We should have done this the other way around, where I do it. Let's I don't see. know it. So pretend there's a wheel there and no wheel there. Pretend, okay. What you're draw train, choo choo train. Bruh. I've said all the answers. This is bro. Uh not even Well, I don't A person. Person in the van. <laughs> okay, part of that's correct. Person. Van. No. What kind of van? Uh 
a horrible van that got in a terrible mess accident. Yeah, there's a yeah little box van, little box van, a box van. <laughs> okay, close. Little's closer. A little you bit have closer. A this game small, <laughs> small van, small van. Okay, which minivan. is known as a minivan. There we go. Okay. Man, guys, that was just that was so fun, wasn't it? That was that was incredible. I had the greatest time of my life right there. <laughs> I'm thrilled at that. that was so That's good. why our numbers just went from four to six. We don't heard about that game. We don't, well, that's actually a growth by fifty percent. Anyways, yeah, he's gone now. So that was awesome. That was a lot of fun. Pastor Kevin, he had been working weeks and weeks to prepare for the game tonight, and uh, so he he worked really hard on that so we're gonna give him a pat on the back way to go pastor kevin i think i may have said pastor brandon uh pastor brandon is joining us tonight if you were not at one night man you missed out on an absolutely incredible night but he's joining us here in just a second and we're going to talk just for four or five minutes about what he talked about on wednesday night it was a beautiful moment we had students raising their hands uh, to accept Christ into their hearts. We had students raising their hands to rededicate their lives. Pastor Brandon, back in the locker room. Good to see you, my dude. How are you? Good, good, good. How's it going? Oh, things are great, bro. We went to the zoo today. It was beautiful outside. Today has been wonderful. So warm. It's you know, nice. I got to be honest. I don't like it. I like this in the summer, but when it's November, nah. Big boy want to wear hoodies. I'll take it. Bro, thank you so much for coming one night. That was incredible. Your message was so timely. You talked about this topic or this this concept of influencer. And I don't want to give anything away because because you did such a great job communicating that to our students. But we have some students who, who can't join us in person yet. So we like to do this youth online for them. So Pastor Brandon, if you could give us like maybe a two or three minute recap on what your message was wednesday because i'll tell you what it was one of the greatest messages for our students in this moment and i appreciate you being uh so aware of what's going on in our society and in tune with what the holy spirit was telling you and leading you to do and i believe tonight's going to be no different yeah it's a lot of pressure to try to get all that in two to three minutes um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um so the gist of what we we're talking about we we're talking about being an influencer and i know for those of you who are watching right now um, if you're on social media, you for sure know what an influencer is. And um, there's a lots of different types of influencers and lots of types of influence out there. And I shared a passage from First Kings chapter 13, where uh, an old prophet essentially had influence over a young prophet and convinced him to do something he specifically said he could not do. And he did it. And then he was attacked by a lion died <laughs> and then uh ended up getting buried with the old prophet's bones on top of his bones weird crazy, crazy. only in the bible story uh story <laughs> and uh i just used it to to point out that there's so much power and in influence this young man knew he was sent on assignment from god to stop the king of israel from doing something he wasn't supposed to be doing, knew his assignment, and was gotten off track by an old prophet who was jealous, no doubt. And um, I just think today, there's so many people, our culture, our schools, I remember in high school, man, I mean, there's just so much stuff being yeah. thrown at us, thrown our way, and I didn't even have one of these porn portals in my pocket back then so we have we have young people who have access to more things more easily than ever yeah. before so many things just coming back at coming being thrown at you and uh, now's the time more than ever to know what the bible says how to live your life to know exactly who's uh, called you to do what and to live by the word, make no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And the Bible says that we're supposed to be the salt of the earth, that we're supposed to be the flavor of the earth. Yeah. And so many Christians act like it's so boring to be a Christian because we can't do the things. No, God, God knows what it takes for us to be able to live life to the fullest. And those things that he cut out are for our benefit. 
uh, for us to be able to live a better life, not to keep us from having any fun. And, and I just want to say, if there's someone on here who feels like they can be an influencer, I want you to go for it. Influence people towards Jesus and leave behind anyone who's influencing you away from Jesus or to do anything that Jesus wouldn't encourage you to do or Pastor Robbie or Pastor Kevin. I was a little disappointed tonight that Pastor Kevin didn't wear those amazing Hillsong New York glasses. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I did see that post. That was hilarious. Um, but anyways, I just know that in this time, people are looking for influence. People are looking for things to believe in, things they should believe, things they should gravitate gravitate towards and I think young people can get creative and have an influence on their generation towards a relationship with Christ and living the way God wants us to live and not compromising to what the world says is okay and believing all that garbage that leads to death and destruction. That's so good, Pastor Brandon. You said something Wednesday night that I've probably said 30 times to my wife because I thought it was so funny, but it was so cool. You said the only drug problem I ever had was getting drugged to church. And yeah. you talked a little about how you felt like your testimony maybe wasn't good enough or, or God couldn't use your story because you never really had this major issue that you could point sure. to. Could you speak to that a little bit? Because I think we have a lot of students who they go to church, they read their Bible, they do their Bible studies. Uh, and they feel like maybe like they've got to do something to get a story, to get a testimony. And I don't think that's true at all. No, not at all. And um, so for those of you who weren't there, um, I was raised in church. My uh, family has been involved in ministry. My dad was a youth pastor um, and my grandparents were, were pastors. They just recently retired after like 45 years of pastoring. Um, and so I was just, I was always in church and I even, I told people like, I don't actually even necessarily remember the moment I got saved. Like it wasn't this big transformational thing because I just, I was always at church. And so yeah. it was just part of my life. Like, and so, um, what I did want to say Wednesday night that didn't necessarily come across was that I chose to surround myself in high school and junior high with people that believe the way I believed. And that's what helped me not fall to the peer pressures and get influenced by the world. I never went to a party, never smoked anything, never tried to smoke anything, never drank anything, still haven't to this day. And it's powerful now because people can't believe that that's possible. Right. And because everyone's tried everything, everyone's at least done something or, or tried some of it. And that's not my story. And now, I'm proud of that because that's not a story that very many people have because they fell in there. They were under the influence of some, of some substance, but of someone to try something. Yeah. And, um, it doesn't have to be that way. You don't have to have those experiences because those experiences only lead to shame and regret. Yeah. And that's terrible so decision-making. That's so good, Pastor Brandon. I love that. I love that that's your testimony. And I love that so many of our students uh, have a similar testimony. But what would you say to our students who would say, man, that, that sounds great. And, and I wish I would have heard this maybe a year ago, maybe a week ago. Maybe this is just a few moments too late for me. What would you say to that student? Uh, is, is, there, is their life kind of messed up? Is it, is it ruined if they made a mistake? What can they do to have this kind of a testimony as well? Yeah, I mean, it's absolutely ruined. There's no no chance, Gone. no hope for redemption. I mean, that's not a possibility. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, absolutely. I think none of us are perfect, and yeah. I certainly am not perfect. Um, and so I think the thing is that um, we have this journey, and a lot of times – it's supposed to look like this. God's perfect will is a straight line from point A to point B. Um, but we usually take it like this. Yeah. And just because, we, just because we get off course and we take a detour doesn't mean that God sends us back to start. It's not like shoots and ladders where you take the ladder all the way or the, the shoot all the way down to the start of the game. You have to start all over again. It's not That's like that with God. Like he just redirects you to the right path to where you're supposed to be. And God can use any mistake you've made anything that you've done that you regret he can use those things the bible says that he works all things together 
for the good of those that trust in the Lord. And so anything that happens, obviously, I want to encourage you not to make stupid decisions and try things that are unnecessary and, and make mistakes. But when you do, God has a way of weaving that into this beautiful tapestry of your life, your story, your journey. And God can use those things to speak to certain people. Um, I'll give one, for instance, for me, it wasn't anything that I did necessarily, but my parents were divorced when I was young, mm -hmm. even though I was raised in church. And um, that was the hardest thing for me because I was like, God, why? Do I have to go through that? Why do I have to experience that? What did I do? Blah, blah, you know, all these things. And then, so that was like one of the most painful things that I had to endure. I know uh, such a rough life, um, but and it was hard for me. Yeah. And um, now having been a youth pastor, I, I get to talk to kids all the time who have had that same heartbreak. And so it became clear that God allowed that to be part of my story so that I could help someone else when they had the same thing going on in their life. And I can't tell you how many kids I've prayed for and just told them, Hey, it's going to be all right. Like I understand the, the rejection and the, the unanswered questions that you're dealing with. And so God can use all of our mistakes, all of our detours um, to speak into someone's life at the right time. And, and God uses all of those things, no matter what they are to help someone else in their journey. That's so good, man. So good. Pastor Brandon, thank you so much again for, for joining us for one night and then joining us again here for Youth Online. Your message was so great. If you had one last thing to say on, on this topic of influencer, how can I be an influencer in my sphere, maybe online, maybe in a school? Where does that start? What's the first step in being a positive influence in the, in the people around me? What would that be? Yeah, so I think if you take a look at any influencer, they're so encouraging, like they want to encourage you to do the thing they're trying to get you to do or do whatever, right? And so I think the church has been in a position where we just want to tell everyone that they're doing things wrong, and that they're yeah. wrong, and that they're going to hell. And while that's probably true, it's not the best way to, to handle the conversation. So uh, true. <laughs> encourage them to follow Jesus and encourage them with why yeah. it's a good, it's a better choice. Um, it's a better way to live. And let them see that through your life. Let them be a part of your adventure and yeah. just bring them along the way. Make it fun and attractive to follow Christ and and not be boring and yelling at people and arguing with everyone because, I don't know, did anybody win any Facebook arguments lately? <laughs> no. <laughs> and this election process has been ridiculous. Oh, I'm my God. Think of lots of my Christian brothers and sisters and the way they act. But, man. Oh, we got to pray for each other and love each other. Pastor Brandon, we hope to have you back out soon. I know you got big plans. God has revealed some amazing things in your life. I don't know yeah. if that's public news or not. So yeah. we'll, uh, we'll keep that on the down low, but uh, we hope to have you soon. We love you and your family. Thank you for joining us. Have a great evening. What is your handle, your Instagram handle? Is it Brandon.Lloyd or what is it? Um, I think I was an original adopter. So I think it's just straight Brandon Lloyd. Great, Brandon Lloyd. Guys, go follow Pastor Brandon. He's an amazing guy. He is an awesome influencer himself. He posts lots of great content weekly, daily. I see him just posting just so much on Instagram. I'm just kidding. At Brandon Lloyd. Go follow him, Pastor Brandon. We love you. Thank you so much. Have a great night, brother. Guys, thank you so much for joining us for Youth Online. Two quick things, and then we have a giveaway. Uh, well, maybe three quick things, because if you're not joining us for one night, I got to tell you what, we, we are very careful about social distancing, about masks. We are very cautious about all those things. We would love to have you come join us for a one night because it's a lot of fun. And, and it's a moment where we get to spend together and to hear a word from, from somebody that we're not used to hearing a word from. And sometimes just a change of, of person can give us a different perspective on what God is saying. So make sure you're coming to one night. If you can't, We'll always be here, Youth Online, Sunday nights at 6 p.m. If you don't have a relationship with Christ and you're curious what that looks like, or maybe you want to begin that for the first time in your life, we want you to do this. Text the word BELIEVE, one word, BELIEVE, to the number 97000. That's 97000. The word BELIEVE to 97000. And one of our youth pastors 
will reach out to you and walk with you through the greatest decision of your entire life. And if you don't have a Bible, we believe it's so important that you have a Bible, a copy of God's Word, so you can follow along what we're talking about in youth services and youth online. If you don't have a Bible, text one word again, First Bible, no spaces, First Bible to the same number, 97,000, and we will get a Bible in your hand if we have to hand deliver it to your house because you're still locked down in quarantine, whatever it may be, we will get that Bible into your hands because we believe so much in the power of God's word and having a tangible copy of that on your possession. Guys, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Like I said, we have a gift card giveaway and we will be giving it away to the first person who can put in the comments, uh what are the what do you call those things what are those things called like when you put a little thing what what are those called like a little thing i don't remember what they're called what are those things called oh man what are those things called i just i just don't remember what they're called <sighs> this is tough um it's not a gif Somebody help me out here. What are those things called? Emoji. That's what it is. Thank you so much, Savannah. Some Okay, so I took my little chicken nuggets to the zoo today, and we saw a lot of cool animals. If anybody can drop an emoji of the animal that my kids like to see the most, it's a complete guess. You have no idea. The first one I see that's right will get that gift card sent to their house. So go ahead and start dropping emojis of animals. If you think you know what my kids were the most excited, it was not the panda. If there was a panda at the KC Zoo, that would be absolutely incredible. But there was not a panda there. That's rude, Claire. It wasn't a pig. There was no bears there. Uh, nope, the gorilla actually died too soon for that. The lion, ooh, that's getting mouse. Claire, Claire, you're crazy with these, with these weird things that you're doing with the weird, what is that? What is that? A nope. An owl? Nope, that's not it. An eagle? Nope, I think the eagle died. I'm not sure where it was. I didn't see it. Somebody already said lion, Claire. So snowman? Get out of here, Kimonse. There was no snowman at the, at the zoo today, you crazy little chicken nugget. Giraffe? Ooh, I was excited about the giraffes, but they were out of stock. Is that Yoda? I don't even know what that is. Maybe there's not an emoji of this. Let me check and make sure that there's a... Nope, not a fox. Um, Let's see here. Start typing words because... Oh, wait, right there. Candy Marie Johnson dropped the emoji of an elephant. My kids were so excited to see the elephant. Candy Marie Johnson with the win. We will be sending you a gift card. To okay, you can quit guessing, Candy Marie Johnson. You won it with the elephant. Guys, thank you so much. <laughs> he said pretzel. You guys are killing me with these guesses. You guys are so silly. Thank you so much for joining us for Youth Online. I can't wait to see you back Wednesday night, 7 p.m. for high school, Sunday morning at 1045 for middle school, and every Sunday night at 6 p.m. right here, Instagram Live. And hey, real quick before we log off, we are uploading these videos to YouTube on Mondays. So if you didn't get a chance to see the whole thing, pop back onto YouTube or IGTV later tonight and it will be posted there. You guys have a quality evening that rivals that of wealthy people. God bless.